Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about the power functions and end behavior models. But I wanted to give you a quick interactive video here that's going to illustrate what we've been doing in class in the function aerobics. So um, let me switch over to the interactive part and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the graph of y equals x. And then we have y equals x squared. Come on now, get going here. So y equals x squared. Okay, so we know this. We've been doing this in function aerobics. Then when I say, okay, show me y equals x cubed, and you know your arms go up from left to right. But there's some interesting features of, this, of these graphs that I want to show you. Okay, so x to the fourth. As the exponent starts getting bigger, the basic shapes of the graphs don't really change. You should notice here, but you should notice when the exponent is even, you see the ends of the graph go, both of them go up, 16, 18, and then 20, and then all the way back down here to 4, two, and then 3, and then 2. There we go. But then when the exponent is, hello, when the exponent is odd, we can see the ends of the graph go up from left to right. Okay. These are positive leading terms, so this is positive. If it were negative, then the graphs would go down from left to right. But nevertheless, when it's odd, they're in opposite directions, even they're in the same direction. If we zoom in, we see a little bit closer look what's going on right near the origin. That's what I want you to take a look at as I increase the exponent number. Okay, so notice that there's a little bit flatter spot right around the origin as the exponent increases from here 1, so that when, x, when the exponent is 1, the graph just goes right through the origin. When x is 2, the graph comes down and it touches the origin, but then 3 is still, still goes through the origin, but this is a little flatter, and it gets flatter and flatter and flatter as the exponent goes up. It would be interesting for us to take a look at the calculator and see why that is, but anyway, just an intuitive sense of how polynomial functions work, um, the general shape of the graphs are, general shapes of the graphs are the same, but a little flatter near the origin. Okay, so then I'll uh, get at the next interactive figure here and uh, be right back with you. I'm not sure how much of this is going to translate through video. It's easier actually for something like this in the classroom, but just in an attempt to help you understand the basics of end behavior models. Here we have a blue graph and the blue graph represents a polynomial function. I'm not sure if you can see it but it's a three-term polynomial function and it's to the it's a second degree polynomial. Okay, we're going to construct a g of x and the g of x would be an end behavior model and uh, again the g of x would be a power function okay and the power function is in the form of a constant multiplied by x to a power. Okay. Well, the most common uh, thing to do here would be just to take the first, if it's a polynomial, just take the first term. So we're going to build just the first term where a is 5 and n is 2. So a times x to the n, 5x squared would be our n behavior model. Okay, if we zoom in, we see that the red graph represents our n behavior model and the blue graph represents our original function f of x. Okay, and so let me add a little bit of detail here. Just want to make sure you're understanding here that the blue graph is f of x equaling... Sorry, it's this thing on my iPad down at the bottom, the new iOS 7. It's, uh, there's something that's down in the bottom besides the wrist guard, and it always pauses my videos. Anyway, the red graph, as we can see, is g of x is 5x squared probably not a mystery here. Where did I get the 5x squared? I just took the most important term of f of x and that's what I built my power function out of and that's in fact what our n behavior model is going to be. Now think about that that term n behavior model. The n behavior doesn't necessarily we're not really concerned about what's happening here in the middle. This is our middle behavior mb for middle behavior and the n behavior model doesn't talk about anything about the middle of the graph. In the middle of the graph would mean anything that's not near the ends. Okay, so the end behavior model, though, I'm going to get back to the interactive part here. So I got to pause for a second. Okay, time in. Now the end behavior again is not. We're not concerned about the middle here. We're going to zoom out. And when we zoom out, we see that the graphs are virtually identical when we look at the graphs from a 
perspective that's much farther away than zooming way in. So when we zoom in, we see they're different, but when we zoom out, we see that they are the same. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to challenge you here. I'm going to change the, uh, the, the f of x to negative x to the fourth minus 2x cubed and so forth. So I'll actually write this down. And what I want you to do is draw the graph of what, what you see here. And um, yeah, so draw the graph. And this is the graph of y equals, or f of x. Let me put it in blue as well. f of x equals negative x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x minus 1. So after doing a couple of these, it's like, okay, this is really easy. But maybe it might not be making a whole lot of sense yet, but just be patient. What I'm asking you for here is a an end behavior model. Did we do it in red last time? Yeah. An end behavior model g of x, which would equal what? Okay. So probably not a not a big jump in in uh, in level of difficulty here, but just pick a g of x, and uh, before I say what that g of x is, and then we'll analyze that. And we'll take a look. Okay, so again, you're trying to figure out an n behavior model for the function f of x. A function that can model it, but it's a much simpler function, a function that we actually know uh, what it looks like. So time in. If I were you, I would be letting a be equal to negative 1, negative 1, and then n would be equal to 4. Okay, and if we graph, we're going to zoom way in though. Oh, darn it. I should have done that. Oh, stupid. Well, that's what the actual graph zoomed in looks like of f of x. Okay. I should have... Uh, I wish I could go back in time. But that's what the graph of f of x looks like. This is what the actual graph of, of g of x would look like. Negative x to the fourth power. So negative x to the fourth looks like that. And when we zoom out, or actually looking at the standard viewing window, let's say in this case from negative 8 to 8 in both directions, we can see they're kind of close and they kind of have the same shape, but we don't get these bumps in our red graph. But what, what does happen if we zoom way out, the graphs, and that's not even a great job either, but the graphs eventually as x gets really, really big, if you plug these both into your calculator, you would see that they actually resemble each other pretty closely. So how many minutes am I in here? Almost eight minutes. So I'll just show you the same kind of thing. Negative, uh, the blue graph here would be 0.5x to the sixth plus, or let's, let's zoom way in. So this would be the standard, let's say, standard viewing window here, negative 8 to 8 in both directions. If we build the end behavior model of those three terms, 0.5x to the sixth minus 3x cubed plus 1, if we just build the 0.5x to the 6, then we go to 0.5 for a, and then n would be 6, and graphing that function would look like that. So again, we don't get the, the behavior in the middle. We're not, we don't care about that. What we do care about is that the ends of the graph look very similar as we zoom out. Okay, so that's how we do end behavior models, and we can talk more about that when we get to class. So I'm going to stop this video and pick it up in the next one, the next part of the lesson. So we'll see you then.